Hello my soccer universe. The Nations League is over and we have the first winner, which are the hosts of the finals, Portugal. So I'm wearing Portugal here. We also have England winning the third place playoff. Probably the most useless uh, game of the entire season. Competitive, competitive game uh, in penalties over Switzerland. And so we get the following result. We have Portugal number one, the Netherlands number two, England number three and Switzerland number four. Um, yeah, I only have a Swiss away jersey, but I think this is so much cooler than most of the home jerseys that they have. Although the current one with the mountain map thing doesn't look that bad. But yeah, I think I decided to put it that way and put on my other Portugal shirt that I own. So there you have it. Um, Quickly on the third place playoff, which I did not watch except for the penalty shootout. I just saw highlights. England thoroughly dominated that game. I think Kaner in the second hit the bar, then in those few chances for uh, Switzerland. Dele Alli had a free header that should have gone in. Uh, then a very weird se sequence where a Swiss defender kind of deflected the shot, then Sommer put it in and it goes to the post again. England even gets the gets a goal right before the end of the game. However, the attacker who scored pulled the shirt back, and before that goal, actually a third time the bar was hit, and then a fourth time in overtime. England should have have had the game in well in hand, and in the back by uh, the end of Ray regulation didn't need penalties. I watched the penalty shoot, though it was really hard to concentrate because at the same time we watched the French Open final between Nadal and team, speaking from Austria, of course. Um, and at the same time as the penalty shoot, but there was a really important game that, of course, Nadal won since he uh, won the entire tournament. Uh, but yeah, everyone in the first five converted. Uh, I think it wasn't even once close. The most remarkable ones were by Ross Barkley, who kind of chipped it a little bit in, I could have been saved, uh, and Pickford hammered it in as the last uh, shooter for England, however, nope, was not to be. I think then Dyer made it 6-5, and Drumic stepped up and Pickford saved, and England wins another penalty shootout. Just take note of that. England wins another penalty shootout. Two in a row for England, they might become really good at that. But as I said, I cannot comment much on that, except that I actually really enjoyed the jersey matchup. It's a classic. I mean, how would you expect Switzerland to play red and white? How will you play England to play white and navy? You have a great jersey matchup. We did not have a great jersey matchup in the final. Um, I don't like those Dutch away jerseys. The light blue is not a good color than this pattern. I mean, uh, when you look at the ca camera, it really switches on you. It kind of makes you... Uh, Call cause you nausea. So I don't like that already. I also don't quite get why doesn't this work? Uh, give the Dutch white pants against the... This should work. Yes, it is two colors that are close, but I think it should work. Um, or let the Dutch play in white. I mean, that's... But, you know, they had some really nice warmer jerseys that were similar to the 2006 away jerseys, which is a away jersey that I actually would like to have at one point. I've seen it now a few times. That's a really nice one. The white one with the Dutch flag going uh, going um, in a sash across. That's a really nice away jersey. Um, if that was the away jersey, I would have no problem. But this light blue one, horrible. Um, and yeah, I mean, Portugal looks all right, although I find the taping on the back a little bit weird. This... I know this is the one they won in, and I like the big crest. This one is how a Portugal jersey should look like, honestly. I really like this one. Um, just saying. Just saying. The match, I'm not sure I can say all that much. And yeah, I don't have many screenshots for this one yet, because I'm doing this about an hour after the final, and there's not too much available yet, but I'll, I'll pull a few up. I made some sparse notes for uh, the final and sparse because the game, especially in the first, was kind of static. And 
I think the Netherlands started out well, uh, like against England, with having a lot of possession, but again lacking penetration. The attacking third is where they have problems, and where Portugal really neutralized them very well with the defensive organization. And I said it in my preview. I say it uh, now. I I, I said it um, after they won against England in the semis. I don't see the Dutch winning because they have a toothless attack. Uh, for all the nice things they do in midfield and for the great defense that they have, I don't see them uh, very well on, in attack. And it was Rian Babel, who I could not remember the other day, um, who was a no-show. But it was mostly down to the uh, defensive organization of Portugal with kind of three to five on the back, then two sitting deep in midfield and then another... Uh, the rest also kind of or organizing to really keep, keep keeping it tight and counteracting what the Dutch do uh, and not giving them one inch of space. That made not for a great first half. I mean, the Dutch started with a little bit more initiative, but after about 15 minutes, you could see that Portugal is a little bit getting into the game. It got more even that the longer the half went, the more Portugal became the dominant team, in, especially in terms of chances. And I had a similar feeling as I had already in the semi-final that while the Dutch may have dominated possession at first, it was entirely... Uh, was England in the semi-final, it was Portugal now that is more dangerous and Portugal has teeth in the attack. I mean, there is Ronaldo, who was a non-factor in the all, almost the entire final. Um, and they have Bernardo Silva, who pulled the strings for this Portugal team and rightfully earned best play of the tournament. Although Ronaldo was discussing it with Jefferin at the end, why don't I get, I scored three goals? And Bernardo Silva's best player. Because you didn't do anything but those three goals. You were no show against Switzerland. Except when it counted. Yes, great on you. You're an absolute wonderful player. But uh, outside of those three goals and that free kick, there was nothing for Ronaldo. So I think he has to be a little bit less full of himself. But who am I talking to? Maybe the courts will take care of it. And we'll go. So... There were not many chances per se. I mean, nothing really where it says this has to be a goal. But uh, Portugal, I think, had 12 one-shots in the first half. And that tells the story of that. I mean, they really were... Um, the Dutch barely could get a shot off. And the one shot they got, got, got off was, was, was miserable. Here are the most notable ones. Uh, a shot by Fernandes um, from the right side. Uh, on to goal that almost got deflected. Uh, Silicon can save it, so it was not as um, bad as when. 12th minute, 28th minute after a corner, uh, Font gets a um, header that he can pull on goal, but it's a little bit too weak, so also Silicon doesn't need to be, uh, do much. In the 31st, Ronaldo has his only action, offensive action of note, where he can dribble through, get a shot off, but nothing really dangerous. In the 38th, another Fernandez shot just over the goal where, yeah, with a little bit more direction, this could, could have gone in. I mean, those were the most no notable scenes. Very tactically final. In the second half, the Dutch woke up and started a little bit more brightly. And in the 50th minute, Wijnaldo suddenly is alone ahead of the goalkeeper. But it is uh, well saved by the goalkeeper, uh, Rui Patricio. And in the end, it was offside. I was glad that it was off off offside because if that wasn't... What a wasted chance. I mean, you try to chip it over the goalkeeper who comes straight at you. Go around him, try something different or have a shot of, of whatever. It was really, really uh, stupid. But then for the next five to ten minutes, it was Portugal. And I already had a feeling in the first half, it's only a matter of time that Portugal says maybe the Dutch can make it nil-nil at halftime. And then there was really a, a series of one or uh, two or three corners uh, that really got da dangerous, uh, especially in the 53rd, where suddenly two Portuguese are ahead of Silesen, the ball uh, on their feet. Uh, again, I think it was ahead of Font, uh, and then the ball goes to Silesen, and they just cannot get it uh, in. And yeah, um, Kuman needed to do something, and may I say, I would have loved to have Kuman playing there, although the Dutch never had had a freak, but just the chance of having someone pulling out a shot that's hard and uh, on, on target, what for me one of Kuman's specialties was. Uh, but 
I don't have a problem with the defense of the Netherlands. Van Dijk and De Ligt, although he, I think De Ligt needs to mature a little bit. Uh, I think he has shows great promise, uh, but I think he's a little bit still overhyped. Uh, Van Dijk is a rock in defense, and when you saw in the end, I mean, he could play also a central striker in midfield. Uh, that guy is amazing. Absolutely amazing. I think he fully deserves to be the best player, uh, at least in the Premier League, as he was voted for. So Kuma needed to do something. He needed to bring a player on. He brought on Van der Beek. And right after this, seemingly something didn't click with, with the Dutch. There was a slight defensive error when Bar uh, Bernardo Silva um, went through a defender, put the uh, ball to um, Geresh or Geres. I want to say Gedesh, but it's Gedesh, probably. Who I thought didn't have a good position, but then he just pulls out a shot that where you can see uh, Blind and the Licht kind of trying to block it, but it just goes over there. And Silison gets a hand on the ball, but it's such a horror shot that it just goes in. And I watched a, a game on German, German TV where Oliver Campbell was an expert and he said, Yes, it's a hard shot, but where shall he put it? This is the only place where he can put it, so you can, as a goalkeeper, a little bit speculate on that corner already. And there's a rule, if you can get the hand on the ball, you probably can save it. So, and I thought the same thing. This was a little bit on Silesen. Um I don't want to say a soft goal, but I think Silesen could, could, could have done something to save that ball. 1-0, and then the Dutch suddenly woke up really woke up and there was not much coming from Portugal anymore except some counter chances and at the end where most of the time they didn't play it very well. But I have only two chances of note. I mean so far I have an offside chance and everything else I wrote down was by Portugal. In 65th there was a corner uh, from the side uh, that was actually well defended. A corner coming from the left attacking side it was well defended. The ball comes out to Van de Beek, who goes on the right side, makes a nice cross in that hits Memphis Depay, and he cannot get too much direction onto the shot. The cross was sensational. This was probably the best chance for the Netherlands. Uh, it was just not too much trouble for Rui Patricio to save. And then there was another uh, one in the 82nd already when Luc de Jong came on where, um, yeah, the ball is more or less randomly coming to or to the team, and suddenly you look, you look the only alone in front of the goal, uh, Rui Patrizio, doesn't go in. That was actually, I really think, the last good chance then, that that didn't do anything anymore. And yeah, Portugal wins, almost expected the first uh, Nations League. I think as soon as they were hosts, and when you see the tournament, and I have to say this, the competitors in this tournament, it reminded me a lot uh, about the Euro 2004, where also the same, one semi-final was Portugal against the Netherlands, the other one was the Czechs against the Greeks. So not this glamour semi-final. Here we have at least England in there and Portugal and the Netherlands have at least won a European Championship. So a little bit more glamorous, but it was not, you know, there was no uh, France, there was no Germany, there was no Italy in there, uh, no Spain. Um, which were teams that you would expect? But I think that's what made it nice. So Portugal wins this edition and it is fitting. They are reigning Euro European champions and they just reconfirmed it by winning the Nations League. Yes, they had to just beat Italy and Poland. Well, Italy, okay. Had to go past Switzerland and I think with the Netherlands at the first real test. So it was, if you want to be very critically, it was an easy route for them. But then look at the Netherlands, where they started from. They, I wanted to say this last time. When they made the initial pots, it was between the Netherlands and Austria. I think the Netherlands needed to get a point to be ahead of Austria to make it in League A, where they were the lowest seed. Um, they almost were in League B. And now they advanced from a group that contained France and Germany, arguably the toughest group, which no one expected. Yes, France is the diva that didn't show up at times, but you know, still you gotta beat France at, at one point. And then um, in the semi finals, you beat England in overtime, and now you just, yeah, the showing today was not all that great. But if the big boys don't show up, that's what you get. Uh, I think Port Portugal is a worthy champion. Uh, they played their group stage, which they won quite comfortably uh, without Ronaldo. That also shows the strength of the squad. And as I said, Ronaldo today was an absolute non-factor. I think he had one defensive clearance in the second half. That was that. 
So he was a non-factor and Portugal is a strong team, especially well-organized defensive team. Not always pretty to watch. I miss my Portugal from 2000. Or, you know, when they were the Brazilians of Europe. That is gone. They are a well-rounded, sound defensive team, uh, which is not what we want to see. Um, I have to say what gives me a uh, promise for the Netherlands is that the Dutch kind of rediscovered what made them great. They lost their ways a little bit under Van Basten, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry to say. Uh, especially, and I think they betrayed their heritage in the 2010 World Cup final. And since then, yes, they had some good showings, but it was more counter-attacking style. I loved how they played at the 2014 World Cup, but it was not the style that I'm used from the Netherlands. Now they're rediscovering it a little bit, having possession, making intricate passing patterns. And now if you have attackers and you, there need to be attackers somewhere in in the Netherlands. If you have them, I think they could get, can, can be a real good team anymore. Uh, ag, as, again. But you know, let's see where it goes. Those are my thoughts. Ah, the last thought I have was a, a, a last two thoughts. I found the Spanish referee a little bit of an odd choice given Spain and Portugal, you know, rivals on the field, but rather friendly neighbors, I would say. So that was a little bit odd, but you know, give him the final game of his career. And I actually, the pre ceremony, I really liked how they put all the nations there in these little squares. Uh, that was actually quite nice. But you know. It was all marred by those ugly Dutch jerseys that don't feature any orange. That bugged me. That bugged me, really. That's probably the, the thing that bugged me more than the Dutch not showing up for about 60 minutes. Anyway, I think Portugal deserved it. Uh, Ronaldo, you could see he was not holding on as tightly to this trophy as he did uh, at the Euros. At the moment, understandable. Um, but I think, to me, the Nations League was, was a success much better than watching all these friendlies. It's a nice competition. I was always in favor of it. I don't know why many, many, many people discounted it. I actually thought the Nations League was more interesting than uh, some of the Euro qualifying that I see now, where you can actually pick and choose a few games that are interesting. Yeah, we have Euro qualifying tomorrow, too. Well... That was it. Let me know what you thought about the Nations League in general, today's games, um, Ronaldo, whatever you want to tell me, the Dutch. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.